February has historically been recognized as Water Quality Awareness Month. Now, the city of Key West really carried the outreach torch throughout the entire month. They promoted three main water quality action areas. The city's sustainability coordinator, Allison Higgins, has all the details for us this morning. Allison, thank you for joining me today. So good to be with you, Jenna. I really appreciate this chance. Now, who all did the city partner with? for Water Quality Awareness Month? We, um, as, as with all of our various themes, we wanted to grab as many people that were, you know, active in this area. And so we reached out to both the agency sides. We had the National Marine Sanctuary and DEP, but we also reached out to the nonprofits. And so we had um, Reef Relief and, and Moat were also part of the, the group that first sat down. Uh, we also had the county, uh, this, and we're hoping that some of the other cities will join us in when we do this next year, February. Wow, so you guys really had a big team working on this. Though. Absolutely, and everybody got really excited because, you know, instead of kind of working in your own little vacuum, if we're all pushing the same message because we've agreed on these are our priorities, we get more done that way. Mm -hmm. And so if, I can only speak in front of so many places, but if, um, Tom Sweets from the Wildlife Center knows he's talking, you know, on this one radio show and this one here, then, then the message gets out to a much broader audience, and that's the key. Absolutely. And now let's talk about the three main areas that you really targeted. So the very first one we talked about was fish carcasses. And it's been really interesting talking to people because there's a lot of people who, you know, when they're, when they're cleaning off their fish, will drop it into their, into their canal or, or into a marina and with the idea that it's, it's, it's part of the circle of life. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. little crabs down there and they'll eat that up and that's a good thing. Um, in most cases, um, that water doesn't move enough to keep it fresh. And so basically you're throwing a chunk of something that'll start to rot. Mm -hmm. If your canal or your body of water is more than six foot deep, it's actually not gonna get the tidal flushing it needs. And so most likely that that um, the dead stuff will go to an area lower than most of your little crabs and your stuff is. When it starts to rot and the nutrients are there, um, the bacteria, they'll, um, they'll suck the oxygen out of the area and then it makes it even less likely that something will be down there. And so you're okay. actually adding to that cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and so, well, there probably are a couple of places where it wouldn't be a bad idea, like it wouldn't hurt things in most places in most cases. Mm -hmm. You're not. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really interesting when we had um, the, the partner you wouldn't think about, um, which was our the wildlife rescue people, the Key West mm -hmm. um, uh, Wildlife Center. They have a really hard time with pelicans and other sea creatures going after what gets dumped. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing the fillet, a lot of times people are throwing the bones in the water. Mm -hmm. And then, so they get a lot of cases where the pelicans have grabbed them and then they puncture their throat and then they have to go and rescue mm -hmm. them. and but the piece we didn't know that was really interesting to us was that it also changes their behavior. So if as the you know, brand new young pelican, if it learns that their food might show up at the stock, it doesn't go hunting. Mm. And if it doesn't learn to go hunting, they've also learned that it doesn't migrate. And all of our penguins are migrating, sorry, penguins, pelicans, <laughs> <laughs> totally different critter. Um, pelicans are migrating creatures. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually changing that behavior so that they don't. Mm -hmm. And so then we've got the place where you had a bunch of, you know, it's high season, you have a bunch of people fishing, but then all those people aren't there. Mm -hmm. And so they get a lot that just die from starvation because that's not there. Like, and so there's, there was this whole other aspect that we mm -hmm. didn't even think of that besides just for the water quality, go ahead and double bag and keep your scraps. What we want to do with the long term is have some sort of station, especially at, I mean, it, it would be harder at your own dock, but at these bigger marinas where people come in with their catch, um, it's, and it's been done in other areas where it's actually there's like a chum station. Mm -hmm. So you come and you bring all the carcass stuff, you put it in there and it grinds it, freezes it in a box for the next time you go out fishing. Mm -hmm. And so that way you're actually using it again. That so, right um, so that was the, the when, you know, when we decided on our three primary areas that we wanted them to specifically be something that the average person can do. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, we should all be supporting Everglades restoration and stuff like this, but what's something that's a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. um, that, that, you know, changing could be a, a big part of. Okay. And um, the second one then was um, appropriate fertilizing. So, you know, we all live in a, you know, everybody lives somewhere that, that has some sort of landscaping in general. And um, a big problem we have down here is too much fertilizer mm -hmm. or the wrong kind, you know, and so there's a lot of the ones out there that are just the generic, you know, I got this at Home Depot, it says fertilizer that don't work very well for 
our area because we don't have much soil. Mm -hmm. And in other areas that have a lot more soil, when that fertilizer, when you get a rain, it just goes into the soil and it kind of binds there. Mm -hmm. When it goes through that much soil and it hits the rock, it just goes straight out into the open water. And that's how it affects water quality is that our areas are very, um, they don't have high nutrients. Mm -hmm. So when you get that, you get a high load of um, the algae. Mm -hmm. That, you know, then your water gets cloudy. That affects your corals and all of that. And so um, we're going to be working a lot with our landscapers. Great. on being able to do that. Great, and now we're running out of time, but I know there's one more area. Could you go over that? Yeah, the very quick? last is your stormwater drains, and a lot of people don't realize that it goes you know, straight out to the ocean, so we're gonna be doing, um, there's some alternative spring break uh, kids coming down with um, helping out reef relief and doing some stenciling, um, but uh, if you see somebody dumping something down a drain that shouldn't be, you should call the code compliance number, which was 809. Oh, shoot. Oh, 3740. Um, and if you want to know about these, you know, what's going on in the future, we've got, um, you can go to our Preserve Island Life website, so www.preserveislandlife, and you go to the pledge. And the pledge lets you tell me what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that you'll get our monthly e-newsletter. And um, you'll know of the next projects we do, whether it be uh, very next month is Transportation Month. And mm -hmm. we're going to do some bicycling stuff and some, bi you know, some walking stuff and uh, some other cool projects. So I invite everybody to join. Absolutely. It sounds like you've got some exciting things up ahead. So it's we'll a have great you job. back on. That'd be great. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Thanks for joining me this morning. And I will be right back after these commercials. So please don't go away. There's more to come.